Hi, and welcome to Mondays with Marlo. I am so excited about our guest today and the topic because we're going to talk about tech, which is an area where I need so much help. And I know <laughs> you all do too because we've got a million questions for you. So this young woman, she looks 12, but she's, <laughs> she's brilliant. Her name is Katie Linendahl, and she's a tech expert on the Today Show and on ESPN every day, right? And you yeah. write for their magazine. Correct. Fantastic. And Spike TV. So we're very impressed, Katie. Thank you. And we're really thrilled you're here. We Thank welcome you. you. Thank you. And our community can't wait to talk to you. So we're going to go dig right into our questions. Our community's right in there waiting to see you. And anything that we ask about, if you think, oh, this is a time to show you something. Yes, I brought some props. Great. Oh, that's great. So we, we'll start with the questions. And then if you have anything that you think answers that question better or whatever, okay, this is your half hour. Awesome. Okay. This is from Gabe. What were the most exciting technologies showcased at CES 2013? What's CES, by the way? Yes, yeah, so CES just came back from Vegas. CES is what I like to call, like, it's what to fashion week and clothing are and to models. It's what it is for the technology and electronic world. There are 20,000 technologies, electronics and gadgets showcased. 35 football fields full of products and in how Las do you Vegas. Get the ones you want. It is the most overwhelming experience because <laughs> you got to get on the ground and then you got to like get against other journalists to try to find things first. Right. So you're really trying to do as much in advance as you can, but being on the show floor and seeing technologies that you've never seen before, it's like the most exciting thing Does in the tech world. Does anything stump you? Yes. Oh, wow. So the big, there's always kind of an unofficial theme. And if you remember in years past, 3D TVs were like the talk of the town. 3D TV never really caught on for a lack of content and people thought the glasses were really clunky. Right, right, right. This year it was all about these 4K TVs. Oh, yeah. So 4K or they're called ultra high def televisions. Uh -huh. And on the show floor, I can't even tell you the size and the brilliance of these television screens. You're just like staring in awe. So everybody was really excited about 4K and really all that means that you hear 4K, what does that mean? four times the resolution of your 1080p high def TV that most of us have in their homes. Right. So that really stood out this year at the show. But there were some other big standouts. When I was telling you earlier, there was an intelligent fork. Yes, what is that? When you're so, just too lazy to, to chew? Exactly, kind <laughs> of. So when you have so many products in such a huge space, one way to stand out is to just be outrageous. Right. So this Happy Labs Happy Fork, it is a fork that when you're, chew when you're eating too fast, it actually vibrates in your mouth and it has a little light up LED. So it tries to pace you in the effort that if you're pacing yourself, you're going to lose a little bit of weight. So everybody, I swear to you, I was like, I had a very tight schedule of meeting <laughs> with different products and companies. The line for the fork was like out the door. Really? So it was just funny to see what people stand out. And that's coming out in 2013. Do I think it's going to be a hit at retail? Probably not but in terms of garnering buzz right, right. it was funny yeah it does it so does. from the, the the practical to the kind of crazy at CES this yeah. year so you think the 4k TV might be something really exciting I think something like that you know as early adopters we get excited to see these over-the-top televisions and technology but I think you know in terms of practicality a lot of these we're going for 2,500 to eighty thousand dollars a piece wow. i think for the average everyday consumer we're three four years out from being right, right. something that you can afford right. exactly okay this is a uh, marlo okay so i run a website and i'm definitely more tech savvy than i was three years ago but what would you recommend to really tech me out oh okay fun <laughs> so I, what I like to do is I like to size people up and give them technologies that I think are very practical. There's a few technologies right now that I think every consumer can benefit from. What do you tell us? So I've actually, instead of telling you too, I want to show you. Oh, great. Because what I've done is I've picked my favorites for you. Oh, that I thought I've, I heard you're an iPad user. Yes. I heard you're an iPhone user. And so I, I love picked, the Braven. Yes, and you love this portable speaker. Let's start there because yeah. you had a portable speaker that you were given previously that right. you loved. Right. Over the holidays, this was my go-to gadget. This is a jam speaker, and I'll have you open it because I want to open your stuff. Typically, Bluetooth portable speakers, what's awesome is they don't need I any can't wires. Even open it. Let me help you. Let me give you a little hand. Still taped. Okay, okay, cool. So wireless speakers can run about 200 bucks, right? right? This little baby pumps out so much volume and so much sound. Wow. It's only 40 bucks and it right. comes in every six different colors of jam. So this is oh, one of my oh. favorite gadgets. This is what it's everybody great. got over the holidays. You'll love this. And You'll it, like it like battery? the Raven. It's a battery? It actually, you plug it, you charge it into your computer. Oh, I see. And then it runs wirelessly off your phone, off your computer, off your iPad. Oh, that's great. And it's so loud. And it's, and it's so small. And it's so tiny. Yeah, that's great. So that's one of my fave go-to gadgets. 
gadgets. Another one that I love right now, this comes in a number of different sizes. This is a Zag. So as you can see here, I have my little iPad mini. Yes. You pop your mini into, this is a Bluetooth keyboard. So you kind of create your own little computer. Right. So then I pop, I have a little stand in the back. Right. And I just it sits here, and I went out on the go. It's kind of like I have a computer. Right. So I brought you one of those. Is four. this better than an iPad? Well, it is an iPad. I just what I did. I popped it inside here. Oh, I see. Yeah. So oh, you pop it right inside, and now you have a keyboard. Because you know that keyboard's hard to type right, on it digitally. Right, right, right. So now you oh, have I that see. sitting so what you're, right what there. You're selling here is this part. Exactly, oh, and I that see. connects wirelessly. So that I brought for one of your iPads. Oh, great. Oh, so that's thank kind of like you. one of my go-to for travel. Oh, great. And then I'm this one. I'm traveling today. I can't wait. Yes, this one's my new favorite gadget. This is Jawbones Up. Have you heard of this one? No. Okay, so this gets me excited because hand off to you. I wear this as a bracelet. And I pop it off, and I pop the cap off, and then I plug it right into my iPhone. And it's what, a charger? I'll show you. It actually, it's for fitness. So it monitors my steps a day, my sleep a day, oh, wow. and my calories burned a day. So as you can see here, it syncs really fast as soon as I pop it into the headphone jack. It took about three seconds, right? And you can see, I'm going to say done. You can see how much sleep I got. Today, I've only had 5,000 steps. I shoot for 10,000 a day. Wow. And last night, I got about six hours of sleep. I, I shoot for about eight. So you wear this all the time? I wear it all the time, and it's water resistant. But like, how cool is this? So even with the sleep, you can dive in and see how much light sleep you got, how much, how many times you woke up, oh, I love how this. much deep sleep you got. It keeps you, like, especially with us on the computers now right, every day, right, it right. keeps you moving and on top of your goals. And what do you have to do to begin to wear this? Nothing. Really? You don't plug it you, in or anything? You pop this on, it's already charged and ready to go, and then I charge this. There's a little cable in there, you charge it on your computer. And wow. it'll last for 10 days. Wow. And I've gotten everybody obsessed with this. Oh, I can't This is wait. the Jawbone Up. I'm doing So my fave gadgets. And then one more that I have for this is kind of a fun one. I love these. This is one of my other favorite gadgets. It's kind of quirky. It is a Bluetooth phone that you use with your iPhone. So you don't pick up your smartphone or your iPhone, whatever you have, whatever you're using. You actually use this to... I kind of like the whole retro handset <laughs> I was say, to keep it on you. Didn't we but just these were like from this? We did, but I, I mean, these are like funny, and they're in all the magazines, and, it's and they're just hip. And it's connected to my my correct iPhone. all off of Bluetooth. That's hilarious. So it's kind of quirky, but it it's one is. of my fave gadgets. What's all this? So you can use it, of course. You can plug it into the headphone jack if you want, but it I is see. Bluetooth uh, compatible. That's great. Yeah, that's great. That's funny. So there's some fun stuff. But there's a little fifties thing there. That's fun. Well, that, those are great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we've got to get to our friends here. So, okay. we've got Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Hi. I really need to up my workouts this year. What are some fitness gadgets you recommend to make working out more fun? Well, I just talked about, let me hash back to the Jawbone Up. This is right. kind of my go-to band that I absolutely love for monitoring your sleep, monitoring your calories, and also monitoring your steps per day. We should be getting 10,000 steps a day, eight hours of sleep a day. Right. It'll keep you on track, and it'll get make you competitive. Right. I also with yourself. With your, Which it's amazing great. when you start to see your own data. Right. We know so much about all these things in our lives, but yet ourselves we don't know a lot right. about, which yeah. is so compelling to me. Yeah. So it really keeps you on top of your own statistics. If you want something a little smaller, another little gadget that I recommend is the Fitbit. It comes in two different sizes. You can hook it onto your bra. You can hook it onto your pants. Another gadget that's going to be kind what of like does a little it do it's for you? steps again, oh, uh -huh. calories and distance moved, uh -huh. which is pretty nice and in a little bit more discreet. Right. And then. One that I really love lately is if you have a kid or if you two are a gamer and you have an Xbox or you have a Wii or the new Wii U, I love the games that you can pop in like Just Dance 4. I'm not joking, I was on the other night jamming out to these 80s songs. I had to get an inhaler. I was getting so <laughs> worked up because there's, you put these games on and you have to mimic the dancers. Oh, I and see. And it sounds silly. Oh, that's great though, but that gets you going. So much fun. And, and that's for your Wii machine, right? Yeah, that's for, they really have it for any console. But uh, Just Dance 4 just came out. And then uh, there's also a Just Sweat in there. Oh, so wow. you can like sweat, you can like hit box and, and box oh, and then do some cheerleading moves. But oh, let me tell you something, you put in 15, yeah. 20, 30 minutes, right. forget it. Oh, I have to get that. So I like that those. Sounds great. Uh, this one, Bob, what are the must-have apps of 2013? Well, first off, let's start with the silly ones that I have all my friends and family obsessed with. So Family Feud app. Uh, what is it, a game? Oh, you know Family Feud. Yeah, right. The best thing ever. Like, 
it's it's like called the ultimate time burglary. You start playing that with like a friend or a coworker or family, forget it. That's like a must have app. <laughs> um, another ones I love is Say Hi Translate. This one's pretty cool. If you've ever wanted to translate anything into a different language, oh, great. and I'll let you go ahead speak anything in there. Okay. Uh, hello, how are you? In less than two seconds. Oh, wow. It'll automatically translate in 40 different languages. Oh, that's great. And there's What's also, that called? That one's called Say Hi Translate. Wow. And again, just a number of different options in terms of languages. Uh -huh. And then um, another one I love is Slice. It actually goes into your email account. It's all safe and secure. And it'll tell you everything that you're spending money on. But it'll tend to tell you when it's shipping. So if you perhaps have a package coming in from Amazon, it's going to say, hey, you know what? Your Amazon package is on its way. Or your Amazon package has oh, arrived wow. today. So it really keeps you on top of everything. But then it also shows you, as you can see here, how much you've spent. Oh my God. So it's like, hey, you got to keep yourself in check with the right, clothing right, right, right there. Right. Oh, that's amazing. A couple other must-have apps that I love. Um, around me. Now everybody has Siri and you can find out where anything is at any time. Right. I think around me is still a must have. You can type any convenience store from a Walgreens to a CVS oh, to really? a FedEx to UPS, any store in here and it'll automatically show you where in your location oh. that particular restaurant, bank, hotel, movie theater, oh, bar I love is. That. Super convenient to have. Um, also, Retail Me Not, well, this is a company I've actually been working with. I grew up in a family of couponers, which I'm very proud of. And when I was little, like, I think my mom just ingrained it in me to just always be looking for coupons. Right. So now I've actually taught my mom in the digital era how to use coupons on a site called RetailMeNot.com, but they also have an app. So whether you want to go to Best Buy, whether you want to go to Target, you can search in any shop. And at the least, let me tell you something, I never purchase anything online without looking at Retail Me Not for an online, at least you get free shipping. But typically you can get 10 to 20% off. These are so many tens and thousands of promo oh, codes for fantastic. stores. Yeah, so that's one, especially around when you're doing shopping for gifts or for holidays, right, 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 it's right. kind of a must have. So some, those are some of my favorites and we'll put some other ones that's online. That's great, that's just great. Oh wait, can I tell you about one other yes. one? So ZocDoc, we're living in this like digital era where by the time your doctor's appointment comes up, you're like, I'm busy. Right. I, well, are you nuts? Like, I made that two months. I didn't even remember I had that on my calendar. <laughs> right. So ZocDoc is this new app, and it's been out, but it's been a huge hit. You can search by specialty doctor, primary care, um, I'll show you right here, podiatrist, psychiatrist, psychologist. You can search by your location, and you can search by date and insurance. Now, the awesome part about this is I always get an appointment within 24 hours. Wow. I get appointments same day. Wow. And they have the ratings, and so you can search by everything you need and by your insurance provider. So I'm kind of obsessed with this app in terms of finding a doctor and getting an appointment right, immediately. Right now. That's great. Right. That's great. Zoc Doc. Yes. Okay, here we go. This is from Tracy. I really need to, to oh, I did that one. So mm -hmm. This is from Stacy. What are some good at Maria? Mm -hmm. First there were laptops, then smartphones, now tablets. What do you think is going to be the next best big thing? It's a good question. So I actually think we're, so... We've seen smartphones, we've seen tablets, we've seen, I think smartphones are still gonna be on the up and up. Yeah. I think, you know, in terms of, and all of us are guilty of this, that is a device that we have on us 24 seven. I right. think what they're, they're uh, capable of doing moving forward is just gonna increase. You know, we keep talking about being able to pay with your phone. We keep talking about being able to use location-based services. Right. Like imagine being in a mall and they have this capability, it's just not used much right now. Imagine being next to American Eagle and it pops up on your phone, hey, come in this store and get a coupon for 20% off. Absolutely, right. I'm gonna take a tangent. I think you know, <laughs> location services and, and how we use our smartphone is just gonna be on the up and up. But I also think too, and a little bit of a digression, I think this future, future of auto technology is one of the next big things because we all pretty much have a, a vehicle, unless you're here you in New York like City. You mean like GPS or more than that? More than that. You know, Siri integration with cars is happening. We're used to Siri on our iPad. Right. That's coming into vehicles in 2013. And then just like... And uh, Siri's going to tell us where things are, you Absolutely. Mean? This voice, voice command technologies have been in vehicles for a number of years, right. but just having more capability to be... And, and we all know Siri. Being right. able to use that instantly. Right. Absolutely, moving forward this year. Um, but even like more high level technologies, interactive windows, where you can actually play apps on the windows, those are wow. being developed right now. Glow in the dark highways are being used in the Netherlands this year. Wow. And they're being solar powered, which is how cool is that? Right. And then even this year, believe it or not, one of the companies that I've been following since its infancy is Terrafugia, which is the first flying car. So, and it's only $200,000. I mean, you see cars that are $200,000. Wow. So I'm really excited for flying cars. MIT is developing. You can a sell one to Jay Leno. 
Oh my gosh, he probably already has one. If I see one more Jay Leno auto, you know, segment, what? to heck with him, no. <laughs> Um, a folding car MIT is creating wow. too for commuters, so it just kind of collapses right in. It, it's exciting to see where things are oh, going. Will, will it really have a, a folding for car? For commuters, and it makes sense. It does. Oh yeah. My God. Uh, this is from Alistair. It seems like every day there's a new version of something coming out. How long do you think it's wise? to keep the same laptop or the phone? That's a great question. I, you know, in the past, a lot of people would say about five, six years. Uh -huh. I think now a fair amount of time will probably be three to five years. And I think the three year line, people are like, whoa, that, that's kind of ridiculous. I think because we're becoming early adopters right, more. Right, right. We want the latest and greatest that's out. You know, I recently got the iPhone 5 three days later and I'm in the industry. iPhone 6 is coming out. I'm like, are you kidding? That's on the rumor mill already. You become <laughs> frustrated. But um, I think three years is great. And I also, I, I think, you know, you come to a point where it's like, what more do you need? Right. You know, I, my whole family is on iPhone 4S, and that's fine for them. Yeah. It's a perfectly fine smartphone. They don't need the latest and greatest, and what it does is fantastic. Right. So if you have a two-year agreement, stick with it. Like, right. it's all about the extra bells and whistles that you need. Right. That, for what you need, good. Uh, this is from Rhonda. I'm not what you would call tech savvy, but I know a little. I'm not sophisticated enough. Is there some place on the web where I could ask questions or get a tutorial? It's a good question. So some of my favorite, let's start with some of my favorite tech sites, because I always have ones that I go to every single day. And I think that ones that are easy enough to read and exciting for a general kind of audience. Right. I love like a mashable.com. I love gizmodo.com. And I also love like popular science, popular mechanics in terms of magazines. Some of the articles can be a little bit more, whoa, just don't read them. If okay. you're starting to get lost. So you're, so you're talking about on the web now, not popular mechanics. Uh, magazine. Oh, but uh -huh. you can also go online too. Right. A lot of their articles are actually on the web uh -huh, too. Uh -huh. So I love those for... Um, so would you say General. Mashable would be one? I would say Mashable is a great consumer friendly because they also give you some like the viral things that are happening right. and the trends to just keep you in the know. Right. Um, I also love Gizmodo as I had noted, um, PopSci, Popular Mechanics, some of my other, some nerdy ones like Technobob which a lot of people don't know about shows you some of just like the nerdier products that I like to go to every day. And then your general ones like go, I highly recommend, you know, Huffington Post, uh, New York Times, check out the tech section and just stay in the loop because I think there's a lot of things that tech savvy or not tech savvy, people are just genuinely interested in today right. like they never have been before. Right, right, right. And, and also you think, well, I don't know, I mean, I'm underusing everything I have. I have all this stuff, mm -hmm. but I'm underusing it. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of doing the same thing on each of them, mm -hmm. you know. And, I, and I'm, I'm excited to go someplace like Mashable and start to see what I could learn. I have to tell you too, you know, even at the Apple Store, I don't, I think this is an underused tool. Like they have different workshops that you can sign up for. And I've kind of just been like browsing the store sometimes here in New York and I hear them giving sessions. Take advantage of those. They're like, sometimes I think they run about 50 to 100 bucks. You can learn so much in one hour about how better to use your phone or you how better one, to use your you iPad. Do you one teacher or, or are you in a I've class? I've seen sessions and there's uh -huh. also one-on-ones. Yes. So if you want to sit with someone I and just learn, that. you really should. Yeah, Why really not, should. right? Yeah. Uh, this is from Gretchen. Hi, Katie. I'm going on a trip to Europe soon and I cannot live without my gadgets. Is there some type of converter I'm supposed to buy? Yes, you need, so anytime you travel, especially over to Europe, every single country is different, but you will need a converter to, tr to switch over all your gadgets. Now you can pick that up at anywhere, Target, a Best Buy, um, pretty much anyone has it for about 10, 15 bucks. I actually have one that's like the mother of all converters. This thing's huge. Wow. You wouldn't need this, but this is for just about every country from Japan to South America oh, to Australia great. to New Zealand. Oh, look at that. It's a little bit more pricey, but it's kind of a one-stop shop. How much is that? This one was about 30 bucks at Target. Right. It's a Conair. Um, but you know, I was surprised too. I was just over in Central America and I have so many gadgets. I was so worried about, um, having the right converter. I didn't need it over there, which I was really surprised. Oh, so, that's interesting. But Europe, absolutely. And then can I warn you too, ladies? The hair dryer. Check the voltage because that could be an easy science experiment. Right. Sometimes it's not just the converter you need, but a voltage converter, which is very rare these days. But you do want to check and make sure if you have a high device right. like a hair dryer that the voltage will switch over. This is from Jim. Hey, Katie, my wife and I are looking, are always on the phone, so I've been looking for a hands-free device like a Bluetooth or a headset. Do you have any suggestions for one that doesn't pick up a lot of background noise and is comfortable to wear? I find Bluetooth really uncomfortable. Really? Yeah. Do you like it? I do and I don't. I, I think like we were showing this gadget earlier. This is a funny Bluetooth right, right, where right. you don't have to be on. Yeah, I also, why were you sticking your ear all day? 
I, there's two that I like on the market. There's um, Jawbone, which actually makes this other gadget that I was talking about earlier. They have really great, well, there's one called a Nerd. That's the name of the model. A Jawbone Nerd. And um, there's also, if you go to uh, Plantronics, is a great audio Bluetooth company. They have a Voyager Pro that's a little bit more comfortable that sits on the ear pretty nice. I got that one for my mom. Um, the Voy or the Plantronics line, Jawbone line, those are two that I would go for. You cannot go wrong with any in that category. Great. Great. And also, P.S., with Bluetooth, um, when I'm working out at the gym, I have Bluetooth headphones, and you can actually take and make calls through that. So really? that's a nice little option just if you're on the go. Yes, right, right. Uh, okay, this is from Emily. I mainly use my lap laptop for day-to-day -day activities like email, music downloads, and web browsing. What feature should I look for? for when I buy a new one. Most computers seem to have lots of best bells and whistles I probably won't use, which is exactly what you said before. Mm -hmm. You know, buy the one that has what you need. Yeah, and I think what's happening now, like my ultimate, it's, it's kind of a loaded question, so there's a lot of different directions I can go, but my favorite uh, computer to recommend right now is a MacBook Air, and this is my computer. We're, we're, we're moving into the world of ultrabooks and very light, as you right. can see, computers. Yeah, right. This does not have that uh, optical drive, like you used to stick a DVD right, in. Right, you don't right. need that anymore. You can do, do all your digital downloads. But I love a device like this because it's going to have all the memory you need, all the storage you need in here. But it's incredibly light, and it right. does everything that one of those big, bulky laptops that, or, right. that you would think about in the past right. would do. Yes. Now, something like this is going to run you about $9.99, and then plus you're going to need the warranty. So, yes, it is an investment. Open that up. Let's see that. But in terms of just having a good tech investment and a beautiful device, uh -huh, that's good. this is kind of my, my yeah. go-to recommendation right, right now. And this is only 11 inches, uh -huh. you know, moving into this ultra book type category. Right, it's so right, popular right, right now. Mm -hmm. it's and kind why of my, do you need this over your iPad? You don't. I mean, it's funny. My friend was at the Apple store and he's like, I'm freaking out right now. Do I need an iPad or I need the MacBook Air? And I'm like, there's more storage and more uh -huh. bells and whistles in here. This is kind of what I call the want, not a need. Yeah. But once you have an iPad in your hand, everybody that has an iPad kind of uses it for different things. Yeah. But um, if you had to make a choice, I would go the MacBook Air. Uh -huh. This is from Jackie. My phone is always dying while on the go. What can I do to make the battery last longer? There's a couple things you can do to your phone settings in general, and then there's also a gadget that I call a must-have. Right. So let's start with the phone. First things first, make sure your Bluetooth is turned off if you're not using it. Otherwise, it's going to keep searching for that signal. Okay. And then another easy number two one is make sure you don't have a ton of apps running. A lot of us are just have a ton of things going on and we don't even realize it. And then three, brightness on your screen. If it's very, very bright, it's sucking out power. Uh -huh. So something is easy, quick fix. But anybody that is on a smartphone, especially an iPhone, because I get this from a lot of iPhone users, Mophie is my favorite company in terms of giving that extra battery life. You pop that on your iPhone, and they just came out with one for iPhone 5, so I'm waiting to put that on oh, my I iPhone have 5. It. You have the Mophie? Yeah. The, so t depending on which one you get, there's actually an Air, and uh, the Air gives you six extra hours of battery life. Right. You just flip on a switch when you're draining low, Done. So I, it's, it's a must-have for any iPhone user. That's great. This is from Diana. I want a camera that's easy to use but still captures high-quality photos. What are some good and not too expensive options? Are you into cameras? <laughs> so I actually have to tell you my honest answer on this. You don't need a camera now. Just use your smartphone. <laughs> it is amazing the number of apps from Camera Plus to Instagram that will give you amazing filtering options and also comic book options. I tell people now... A camera's kind of passe, unless you want something very DSLR and very high-end, like a Canon. Right. Use your smartphone. Save yourself an extra gadget in your purse. Great, great. Uh, let me see here. We're going to run out of time. Nope. Um, what are your thoughts on a 4K TV? So you're saying that it's a good buy? No, I, oh. I actually think 4K TVs now are like the eye candy in the early adopter world. I think in two to three years, we'll have that conversation. Right uh -huh. now, don't spend your money. It's too expensive, not practical. This is from Dave. Speaker pillows, speaker pillows. When will <laughs> we be available to buy them? What, what's a speaker pillow? I mean, is it literally a pillow with a speaker in it? It is. You know, we always see a lot of concepts come out on the tech side, which is kind of a disappointment because we get really excited and get like we see over the top gadgets like the speaker pillows that a few pictures have po uh, popped up in the last month. But in terms of coming out, well, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to see the speaker pillow. I don't know that you need yeah. it, do you? Well, okay, well let's get a few more in. <laughs> okay, this is uh, from Robin. I'm about to upgrade my iPhone. I can either go with the 4 or the 5. I like the new features yes. of the 5, but since I would have to change chargers, 
I want to know if it's worth it. Changing charger is not as big of a deal. You know, this is a question I get a lot in terms of smartphones. Like, do I need to make that upgrade? Let me tell you the honest answer. If you're an iPhone user and you want to go from 4S to 5, do not do it yet because the 6 is going to be out in just a few more months. However, charger, a lot of people were complaining because it went from a 30 pin to a much Why? smaller pin. Not that big of a deal. Why do they do that, though? Why don't they just make it so that you don't have to well, another charger? It is pretty annoying. It First, is very I've annoying. had to switch everything over I and I still know. have iPads that have the old 30 I pin. Know, and I have one in my purse and one in my suitcase and one in my house, and then I think now I have to get three more of these again. Right. So it right. Just seems. But this upgrading phone thing is becoming even, like I had my first moment of irritation from it when I heard that, you know, I just got an iPhone 5 and I heard iPhone 6 right, is right. coming out. Do you need all the extra bells and whistles? You know what I think is great about um, newer models is typically you get a better camera, a little bit faster of a processor. Right. Is that something that you need? Right. You have to ask yourself that at the end of the day. Right, right, right. That's good. Okay, let's get some more in here. Mm -hmm. um, if you already have the 4S and an iPad, what really is the point of the iPad? when the 4S can do everything that it can do and it's more portable. So this is another question, Kathy, about, you know, an iPad, an iPad mini, and an iPhone, and an iPod Touch. There's just lots of different <laughs> options for you out there. And I think, you know, it can be overwhelming for the consumer which to pick and which to choose. If I had to say one, take the iPhone 5. This is the device that's on you 24-7. Wow, there you go. There's a direct yes. answer. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Maria. I have an iPhone, I have an iPod, have different music in each. How can I merge one into the, into the one? Yeah, so if you have multiple, especially, this is what's great about Apple. They've, in, in companies in general now, they're trying to create this ecosystem. Right. So if you have all iOS devices, and what I mean by that is if you have an iPad, if you have an iPhone, if you have an iPad mini, all that music can be synced together. You can either plug it into your computer, and you can do that through iTunes, or you can use the cloud, which is now like the ultimate buzzword, <laughs> which is if you download an app to your iPad, it's automatically going to download to your iPhone. Just make sure in your settings that that iCloud, you check a little box yes and turn those settings on, everything will work together. And I think that's what's cool about being in this Apple ecosystem or being in this yeah. Android ecosystem. Right. Everything syncs together yeah. perfectly. Exactly. That's great. Um, everyone's backing up the cloud. Speaking this of the is, cloud. This is from Valerie. Hi, Kay. Everyone's backing up to the cloud. Do you recommend this? What are the downsides of getting rid of tangible storage? It's funny. So when the whole buzzword of the cloud came out a few years ago, nobody in the tech world could even define it. So everybody was asked, what is the cloud? And everybody's like, well, and we would go on these long tangents. Cloud means we've been using the cloud for many years. And I think a good example of doing that is like now, if you go into like Gmail, for example, you're typing email, I can actually save documents on Google, which is a nice little option. However, when it comes to taking all of my storage, I'll tell you that I back up my computers about every, about three weeks-ish, I still back it up on a physical hard drive. It for me, because that's how I grew up, I like to know that it's on two separate hard drives right. and it, heaven forbid should anything happen, I can physically take those with me. Right. However, cloud storage is great. I think that's the direction that we're moving. I just think for right now, and for, it's subjective, Back up on a physical drive, you can get a two terabyte drive at Best Buy for super cheap. I think I paid $79 for two terabytes. That's like a ton of data. Right. Buy the physical storage, and then if you want to back up to the cloud, you have that option as well. Right, right. Uh, let's see what else here. Um, this is from Rich. I'd like to buy the keyboard connector for the iPhone I saw in a recent segment of yours. How much are they, and where's the best place to buy, buy it, order it? Thanks. I, I think I uh, showcased a keyboard for an iPhone. You know how we have that digital keyboard and we're like mm, trying to type on right, it? Right. There's a slide out keyboard that you can buy at Brookstone. Oh, now great. it only goes up to 4S because they haven't come out with a 5 model yet, but it is pretty nice to type on. So that rich is at Brookstone. Great. This is from Carlotta. Which tablet is best at accessing college textbooks? Any. Um, if you have an iPad or if you have, um, it's all about the apps that you use typically. A lot of people are using No at KNO for college textbooks. Uh -huh. I would recommend having one of those apps available and you can access it really off of any tablet. And let's see what else here. Uh, this is from Tracy. All I have is a Blackberry. What kind of smartphone should I start with? Oh, Tracy, I feel your pain because <laughs> I can't get rid of my Blackberry. Oh, really? Even you? Because I, the keyboard. Oh. Like everybody wants a response in 10 seconds and right. I just like, do 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 so. Let me tell you something, and it's a whole other conversation in itself. BlackBerry is dying a slow, slow death. They have a new model coming out um, January 30th, so I'm excited to see what it's going to look like. It's been getting good reviews, but in terms of a good quality smartphone, 
Let me give you a few recommendations. First off, iPhone 5, which we've been talking about. I also love Samsung's Galaxy Note 2. It's a little bit larger in size, but it comes with a nice little stylus that you can write with. Beautiful in terms of taking pictures. Home run. Um, and also anything in that Galaxy family, Galaxy S3 from Samsung, I would say that's my one, two, three. So you have Samsung Galaxy Note to look at, uh, Galaxy S3, and also the iPhone 5. Those are my recommendations for smartphones. Okay, now we're, we're, we're running out of time, okay. but I want to get as many people in here as possible. This is from Karen. What do you do when you get water in your <laughs> iPhone? <laughs> well, let me tell you something about getting water in a smartphone. Uh -huh. Don't lie. Because people know when you take it into the store, especially with um, particular smartphones, they can pop off. There's a little red dot. It becomes oh. a red dot when you get water in oh, your smartphone. Really? So don't try to lie as first things first. <laughs> the one that I've heard work best, there's two things. Take your battery out immediately because you don't want to start causing little, you know, little happy electricity going on there. Right. But also put it in rice. Yes, is, I heard that. But then my one friend who I actually highly, I, I would actually trust, he said Rice Krispies. Oh, really? So... Try some Rice Krispies. That is funny. Or rice. And okay, this is from Tracy. What's the best tablet for my seventh grader? Best laptop from my wife mm -hmm. and helping them always to debug their systems. Yes. I'll stop there for now. Thanks. Have a great show. Best tablet for a seventh grader. This is what I say about tablets and if any technology for kids in general. And I'm talking about starting at the age of four because I have a niece who is the ultimate product tester. <laughs> Kids are not dumb, and this is what's fun. They are smarter in technology than we ever oh, were when we were absolutely. little. I mean, I started when I was 12, and that's passe now. Right. You know, that was the AOL era. Forget it. These kids are running circles around us. I would really get an iPad. There's a couple other on the market, and, you know, you can go really young and go into that leapfrog department. Kids aren't dumb. Yeah. They know apps. They know how to get around. They'll show you how to swipe. Make the investment. So they know how to, they can put, and it's not just about entertainment, it's about education, and it's pu putting stuff on there that they'll actually use. And they can get school books and things. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting too, watching this whole evolution happen in terms of kids using tablets in schools and laptops. Some, some schools are actually recommending that you bring your laptop to school. Mm -hmm. So it's just a whole shift. So if you're, again, talking about a seventh grader, I don't think an iPad, if you're asking about best tablet, is a bad option. And two, take advantage of your options now. You don't have to get the latest model iPad 2s are inexpensive compared to the latest fourth version model. Right. Okay, let's see now. Uh, what is your opinion? This is Donna. Ultrabooks versus laptops. Uh, that's a matter of preference, I guess, is the quickest answer. Mm -hmm. um, Ultrabooks are this big buzzword last year in terms of just getting thinner, lighter, faster. Right. You know, it's amazing. If you really just want a computer and y you want something a little bit inexpensive, go to Best Buy and see what's on sale. Right. But if you want a long-term investment, as I was saying earlier, I love my MacBook Air, right. my 11-incher. It's I, I have to check my purse sometimes to make sure it's in there. <laughs> in terms of having like an investment it's so machine, light. it's amazing. Uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, this is from Donatella. I'd like to know what's the best antivirus software. I've heard that there really isn't a true preventative, but I find that hard to believe. There's always going to be viruses. I mean. No way around it. I love Norton uh, for PC users. I also, mm -hmm. as I noted, for smartphones, I think this is going to be a trend that we see happening, especially moving forward. I think hacking into smartphones isn't going away, especially as there's all these apps that are accessing all of your data and information. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend Lookout for both Android and you can put it on iOS too. Okay, we're, we're so out of time, but let me just sure. be greedy here. This is from Harriet. What is the new iPad mini? I have a regular iPad. What's the benefit of it? So she wants to know... Should she get rid of her iPad or add to her this iPad? This is my favorite gadget right now. I'm like kind of obsessed with it. It's all about portability. I mean, this has the specs inside here of an iPad 2. So it's not like getting the best of the best with an iPad 4. But if you want, you don't need it. it, it you're making a choice. You're going iPad or you're going iPad mini. It's pretty much the same thing. Right. But that convenience factor and taking this with you, and I have this in a little bit portable keyboard, which is what you're seeing here. I'm kind of obsessed with it. At night, just reading books and reading with one hand and not having to hold on, right. it's really just a whole different experience. Right. But, but, but you still have more things that you can do with the larger iPad, right? Same thing. Oh, really? Apps, email, it is, it is just a, all just, things iPad and a smaller form okay, factor. Well, there you Done have deal. It. Rhonda, as large as the battery is in my cell phone, why does it not last three years? My watch battery is much smaller and it can last two years. Rhoda, I'm telling you, get a Mophie. That'll charge six to eight extra hours of yeah, battery really, life. Really great. This is from Eamon. 
What is holding the complete integration of TVs and computers back? Why are TVs still not controlled by Bluetooth, for instance? Entering text on a TV app is really hard with an infrared remote control, but a snap with a Bluetooth keyboard. It's, a, it's an interesting question. So I have to say, when I was out at CES this year, and they were touting some of the latest televisions, Everybody knows that we have this second screen experience going on, that we're on our tablet and we're on our phone at the same time that we're watching TV. Why can't the two better integrate? Google tried that, it didn't work out so well, it never sold well. This year, I will say, from Samsung to Sony to LG, everybody is trying to create smarter television sets. A few things that I saw were um, voice dictation technology. You can talk to the TV and be like, hey, can you turn on ESPN? Hey, can you turn on CNN? And it will automatically change that channel for you. TV's also getting smarter in terms of, hey, can you pull up a program that I might like on the TV right now? It'll actually make recommendations wow. for you instantly. Wow. Also, uh, face recognition technology coming to television sets and something else that's coming to television sets. If you have the latest um, Android smartphone, you can actually tap your phone to the TV now, send photos, videos right to the TV, wow. and that TV can send that back to another user. Oh, wow. So I think TVs are becoming way more smarter than I ever thought they would, right. but I think in terms of- well, they're not ready yet. They're not out they're yet. getting there yeah and I think this year will be we also have to see if consumers are gonna want it right consumers in one 3d which I'm like obsessed with well, so I wouldn't want 3d oh my gosh like, if you ever <laughs> seen like the experience on a home theater it's well, unbelievable yeah well, it's like you're I'm like grabbing for things oh, yeah, right 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 well um, let's see now I'm gonna see what I can do what can I do when on iPad 2 and I'm reading as I'm scrolling and suddenly the iPad cuts me off like it has turned the iPad off what causes that? It's been doing it frequently. And so is there something wrong with your iPad? Huh? That's interesting. I, w I mean, I'd have to like see it and put my hands on it to try right. to wrap my head around it. But I always say to make sure your settings are updated. Right. Make sure you have the latest software. Honestly, the biggest trick, and I'm like, I do this over the phone with my friends. I'm like, turn it off and then turn yeah, it back on. Isn't that amazing? It, it, it is amazing. Moving. It, just restart, but also right. take it in. Yeah. Take that sucker in. And typically people are like, I didn't have a warranty on it. The Genius Bar will help you. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's hard to see without, like... We're, we're completely out of time. We've oh, been we've fabulous. Been fast. We've, just, we've been fabulous. Thank you. So is there something that we didn't ask that you think it's important that we know? Now, don't forget, um, we're not genius users. We're, right. We're trying to figure it all out. But I'm just wondering if you have any tips for us on stuff that we didn't ask about, because you know uh, so much. Oh, you know one thing I did want to talk about? Yes. It's just really briefly. So I cover sports technology a lot, and I think this is really important for parents. Um, we hear this buzzword now a lot about concussions, mm. and I think it's very scary. Okay. And I think it's very unmanageable, and a lot of kids, especially at the youth and the high school level, are getting hit with high impact, and then they're not getting pulled out of the game, nor do they know they have a concussion. And this was one little gadget that I love that is on the market. It's from X2 Biosystems, and it's a skin patch, and you wear it right behind your ear. And what happens is it's partnered with Microsoft technology. And as soon as a child is hit, it will monitor in real time and it'll send data down to a coach's or clinician's iPad. And it'll oh, say, wow. you need to pull that kid out. So I've been like fascinated by this lately. This is being used at Stanford on both the men's and women's sport oh, teams, University of Washington and Michigan. Oh, that's and great. I just think it's like, this is where we're going in helping alleviating brain concussions right. and brain technologies that's or great. brain uh, and issues. How, how much is this? So this is actually purchased by the team. Oh. They have them in mouth guards as well. Oh, really? And I think like, I hope that the NFL too is moving in a direction like this, but this is, this is an example of technology that being in technology my entire life that I get excited by. Right. Like, this Every is the future. Every player would have to wear one. Yep, and right. they're wearing them in full practices and games right now, and they're working amazingly. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So oh, good. Yeah, oh, that's great. one thing I wanted to talk well, about. there's a tip that we've never <laughs> asked about. We've never asked, what do we do when we have a concussion? How, how can we be sure our kid yeah. is taken out of the game? Anyway, you've been, you're brilliant. Thank you. Woman. We're so excited to have you, Katie, and Thank I hope you. you come back. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next time.